Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Yosvanes El Cubano Valle was born on September 7, 1975 in Havana, Cuba. His parents were together for a short while, but his father left Cuba to live in America. His father was now known as a Marielito because he was one of 135,000 Cuban immigrants who left Cuba in 1980 from April to September on a boat. The event was known as the Mario Boat Lift. When his father left, it caused Yosvanes to become depressed. This was also the start of his behavioral problems because after his father left, his mother had men coming in and out of the house who showed neither him nor his mother any respect. His punishments were abnormally harsh and he peed in the bed for years. He quit school in the eighth grade and after being unhappy for so long, he continuously begged his mom to move to America with his dad. Finally, at the age of 14, his wishes came true and he left Cuba to live with his father full time in America. Although he was happy to be with his father, life in America was not easy and it's been said that he had a very difficult time fitting in and ended up turning to the streets. He began acting out in anger and aggression and was in and out of juvie a few times for crimes related to aggravated assault and weapons charges and he was sent to the Texas Youth Commission each time. In 1993, at the age of 18, he was convicted of a felony charge of weapons possession and was sentenced to eight years in prison in Harris County, Texas. He entered prison in November of 1993 and while in prison, he joined a Latino gang called La Raza Unida and rose to the rank of sergeant. Despite continuing a life of crime in prison, he did not serve his full sentence and was released on May 9, 1997 at the age of 22. Two years after Yosvanas was released from prison, he was still heavily involved with his prison gang and looked for ways to provide money for his brothers still locked up. On June 7, 1999, Yosfanis and four of his friends slash gang members met up to set up a plan for robbing a drug dealer in the area by the name of Jose Yogi Junco. Yosfanis was the mastermind and assigned duties and roles to each of his friends. They also knew that Yogi would be able to identify them, so they planned on killing him during the robbery. It was around 11 o'clock at night when Yosvanis and his men decided to make their move. Yogi was at his home alone with his girlfriend Amy and their dogs that were in the front yard. Since the house was a known house of a drug dealer, they were both used to their dogs barking when customers came close to their property. When Yosvanis and his men made it to Yogi's house, the dogs started barking and Amy saw the men and assumed they wanted drugs. Yogi went outside to meet Yosvanis, but moments later, he came back in the house with his hands in the air and all of the gunmen following behind him. Yogi instructed his girlfriend not to look at any of the men and her face was eventually covered by one of the intruders. Yosvanis then began arguing with Yogi, demanding he show him where his money and drugs were hidden. The intruders found two rifles and a little cookie tin that contained a small amount of money, drugs, and a few pornographic photos. Yogi was then shot nine times and Amy stayed on the floor with her face covered until she heard the killers drive off. When she discovered that her boyfriend Yogi was dead, she immediately called 911 and let them know what happened and also informed the operator that items were stolen from their house as well. On the ride back home, Yosvanis asked one of his men if he shot Yogi and he showed Yosvanis a sock he wore over his hand and it had a bullet hole in it. The man bragged about shooting Yogi so many times, but he was upset that they only made it out with $100 and a quarter of an ounce of cocaine. Not long after the murder, police received a tip, so they conducted a lineup and brought Amy in to see if she could identify any of the men that were involved in the murder. She was successful in identifying one of the men involved in the crime, and just two months after the murder, Yosvanas was arrested while in the city of Pasadena attempting to bail a gang member friend out of jail. Little did Yosvanas know was that his so-called friend he came to bail out ratted on him as being the mastermind of the murder of Yogi. During his jury trial in Harris County, Texas, evidence was presented that he was a felon that was convicted for possession of a firearm before and had been in and out of juvie and prison so would be a repeat offender. 
It was also made aware by testimonies from gang members that turned on him that he ordered the hit of a gang member by the name of Raymond so that he could take his position as leader in the Houston, Texas area. That same month, he ordered the hit of a man by the name of Carlos Escamilla. The last murder he committed before killing Yogi was when he fatally shot a man by the name of Gregory Garcia in the parking lot of a convenience store. He was able to get away with all of these murders, but presenting evidence during trial sealed his fate and in April of 2001, Yosuanes was sentenced to death. All of the men involved in the murder, including the one who admitted to Yosuanes personally that he shot Yogi, got lesser sentences. While on death row, Yosuanes did go through several appeals. There were 21 points of error. One point of his appeal was that the death penalty was unconstitutional. His next point was that it was not fair that the jury concluded that he would be a future danger to society. His next point was that there was enough evidence to warrant a sentence of life in prison instead of death. Yosvanis felt that it violated his constitutional rights to not show his mother's interview during trial where she went on to talk about her medical issues and all of the struggles Yosvanis had as a child. In denying the appeal, Judge Frank Maloney made a comment. Moreover, appellant's expert, Dr. Cervantes, testified that he relied on the videotaped interview with appellant's mother and stated some of the facts from the interview that were the basis of his expert opinion. Given the testimony, appellant did not need to present the actual videotaped statements to show the jury that the expert was relying upon significant information conveyed by appellant's mother. One of the last things he argued was that he did not have the best legal representation. There were no fingerprints that tied him to the murder, no other evidence like blood, and the jury relied solely on the testimony of other gang members. One of the other gang members involved in the murder was sentenced to only eight years in prison, so he felt his legal aid should have fought harder for a lesser sentence. In the days leading up to his execution, Yosfanis was interviewed on death row and said, I did wrong to a lot of people. I've been trying to work on my life since then. Yosfanis entered death row in May of 2001 and was scheduled to be executed on November 10th, 2009 by lethal injection. For his last meal, he had four hamburgers, french fries, Mexican rice with onions, tomatoes, cheese, salad dressing, and jalapenos on the side. Everything he ate, he requested to be overcooked and charred. On the day of his execution, his family members were in attendance, and although Yogi's family was not in attendance, Gregory Garcia's family was there. For his last words, he denied killing Yogi and said there was nothing he could do to avoid death because his appeals were denied. He repeated his last words in both English and Spanish. I blame myself. I'm not going to blame nobody. I understand why I am paying this price. That's the reality of life. I am sorry. I got to pay for it. I am sorry with all my heart. He then looked at the family of Gregory Garcia and said, I never wanted to kill your family. I was forced to do it. I was a gang member. I feel good. I love my family. I love you, Jesus. He then looked at the warden and said, I'm ready. He was executed by method of lethal injection and was pronounced dead at 6.21 p.m.